Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. You'll meet some talented seed stock producers who are working hard to supply their customers with genetics that improve their productivity and profitability. Plus, we'll get insights on the value of crossbreeding for your herd. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Auctioner. Cattle producers are always looking for ways to increase their profit potential. One way is to improve the genetics in your herd. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter has a look at how crossbreeding can improve an operation's productivity and profitability. If you're a cow-calf producer, there are two primary ways to improve your profitability, either cut costs or increase production. Dr. Bob Weber of Kansas State University says one of the low or even no cost strategies for cattle producers to improve their profits is by implementing a program of crossbreeding. I think one of the, the real challenges we face is, you know, in the last few years, we're kind of back into the cost price squeeze, right? We had $3 calves for a while, which everybody thought was great, which and, and, uh, that is, but we're back to sort of realistic levels now. And, uh, you know, most of the university estimates say annual cow costs over 800 bucks a cow. Um, so everybody now is going back and thinking about how do I become more efficient? Um, and I think against the backdrop of sustainability. So thinking through, you know, how do I integrate my decision making to increase profitability um, but also meet lots of objectives in terms of replacement rates, calf product, and those sort of things. So um, crossbreeding is one that's come back to the, the discussion because we know of that substantial increase in weaning weight per cow exposed um, that various crossbreeding systems offer. As part of NCBA's producer education program, Dr. Weber spoke to a crowded room at the 2019 Cattlemen's College. He told the group that decades of research and experience clearly show that a well-thought-out cross-breeding program gives producers stronger cattle performance. We understand a lot of the opportunities and benefits that crossbreeding presents to us in terms of really two key areas. One of those is heterosis or hybrid vigor, that extra boost in performance we get. Um, and the other piece is breed complementarity. So how do we put breed components together that make sense in terms of really kind of optimizing our cows for our production environment. So controlling cow size and lactation and capitalizing on the increased longevity and reproductive performance of crossbred cows. And then mate those two complementary sires that produce calves um, that are market targeted. More pounds per calf is one direct benefit of crossbreeding. And Dr. Weber used several examples to show that the bottom line impact on a commercial cow-calf operation can be significant. I used literature estimates for improvement in weaning weight per cow exposed, and I used a, an F1, so say a uh, black baldy cow mated to a terminal bull uh, as an example. So I've got all the cow heterosis I can get and individual heterosis. And uh, my estimates that right now that's worth about $150 per cow per year um, in terms of additional uh, uh, revenue. And the beauty of that is, is we get to capture that $150 bucks, um, without really changing resource base or cost inputs. In many cases, costs in our system go down because of decreased replacement rate um, as one of the primary areas. And so I think producers, we get really focused on how much calves weigh when we sell them and how much they bring. That's the premium that we talk about in the marketplace. But we need to take a step back and look at how did we actually produce those calves and how much did it cost to get them there and figure out ways to do both pieces, right? Build premium value calves in the marketplace, but do as much on the backside to control costs and inputs as we can. And heterosis plays a big role. As with any production change, Dr. Weber says each producer must evaluate for themselves how crossbreeding might work best for their operation. One of the first and, and most important steps, I think, for producers is to, to do some, some reading and some education. Make sure you're kind of up to speed on, on the various crossbreeding systems to do the planning work. Then go run it past some people. Okay, people you trust. Um, that might be your seed stock vendor, your veterinarian, uh, extension professional, any of those guys, because they're gonna have a different view of your operation than you do, and can really provide some of that, that sounding board and feedback. And the other thing that does is build some accountability, right? So making sure we put a plan in place and we continue that plan over years is really important. 
With the right plan and clear goals, Dr. Weber says a cross-breeding program doesn't have to be complicated. In fact, he says it will be more valuable if a producer keeps it simple and sustainable for the long term. I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're not done talking about the topic of crossbreeding. When we return, we'll talk about the value of adding Hereford genetics to your herd. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It's time to tune in to Tennessee for CattleCon 2021. CattleCon is the oldest and largest event in the beef cattle industry, and we're headed to the Music City, a city filled with the best music, great food, and some down-home Southern hospitality. And you can't afford to miss the huge NCBA trade show. It's our Super Bowl event. It's where all the producers come. We gain a lot of knowledge from producers who we've come to know over the years. There's no better place for cattlemen and women to learn, have fun, and connect with fellow producers from across the country. The value of it is I get to connect with tons of different producers around the United States and be able to learn from different people as well as meet and network with tons of different companies. Dynamic speakers, unbeatable education, all for cattle producers. So plan to tune in to Tennessee for CattleCon 2021. Visit convention.ncba.org for more. We didn't just design the 6M tractors with you in mind, we designed them with you by our side. The new 6M tractors from John Deere, reimagined by you, for you. For a limited time, get 0% APR financing on qualifying 6 Series tractors and round balers. Experience the new 6M at your local John Deere dealer. Producers are always looking for genetics that will allow them to get the most out of their calf crop. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brad Bulla explains why producers may want to consider the Hereford breed if they want to improve their bottom line. For more than 100 years, the Hereford breed has been a part of the U.S. beef industry. With cattle producers facing more challenges than ever, using Hereford genetics in a crossbreeding program can help. We're very proud at the American Hereford Association to endorse uh, the commercial female and the commercial F1 baldy female. She's been the queen of the cow herd for a long time. Crossbreeding and hybrid vigor uh, has definitely worked and been well documented. Uh, over the last 75 to 100 years, time in and time out. And you couple that with the fertility that you gain with Hereford genetics going on uh, what is today primarily a, uh, an, an Angus driven or a black commercial cow herd, and you're gonna get instant rewards because of those advantages in uh, fertility, heterosis, what you're picking up in that cross. When you think about complementary breeding and heterosis, taking two breeds that are more unrelated than another. Uh, Hereford really has a big impact over uh, other breeds when it comes to that heterosis and hybrid vigor. With the Hereford bulls, we've seen a lot of hybrid vigor in the extra weight that we're getting in the calves. Last year, we were really strong Hereford sired, and that was the heaviest set of steer calves we've ever weaned, and it was 23 pounds heavier. Since we started using Hereford bulls six, seven years ago, I can sure tell a difference in our, our weaning weights. Even on our baldy cows, we stick a black bull on. We either get a black calf or a black baldy calf out of those baldy cows. Those calves hang right in there with our F1 crosses too, you know. Uh, just, just really, really high on the baldy cows. The hybrid vigor is working good for both Angus and Hereford programs. These baldy calves out of these Angus cows I mean, they'll hit the ground in 30 below weather and they'll jump right up and they don't have any problems. I think that hybrid bigger, you get a little black Angus in with a Hereford and I think it's really working well both ways. Hereford has been around uh, since 1881 and, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, you think about the different climates in the U.S., the Gulf Coast region to the upper Northwest to Southern Florida. Hereford can thrive in all those regions very well. The adaptability, the hardiness of that Hereford female, the bull, or a crossbred female, 
a tiger stripe, a baldy, a red baldy, they all work. The American Hereford Association is committed to working with commercial cattle producers to help them find the best marketing option for their Hereford cross calves. We're very dedicated to the cow-calf uh, commercial producer and we believe uh, there's, a, there's a big ceiling left for Hereford Genetics to make a big impact in this commercial industry. Our staff is very dedicated to the American Hereford Association to make sure these guys and you are profitable. And so we set up the Hereford Advantage program. It's been around for about three years now. And that's an opportunity that commercial producers, it's a free program that they have. We turn uh, that information into a very progressive uh, list of buyers and feeders that we have. Uh, we get on the phones. Uh, we send emails out, texts out to this group of feedlot buyers that we have uh, so they can uh, know about your calves and we help you market them. The Hereford Association has been real good to work with on the marketing end. We sell privately and have for years and when we switched over to F1, our buyer was not really excited about that. Then the Hereford Association, finding a premium for those calves, there's no hang-ups when we're trying to deal on them and stuff after he found out there is a premium and a place to go with them. The markets are, are volatile, they're tough, and I think we're in a position in and in a day and time where it's about reputation. It's about developing that reputation for that next buyer or two buyers from now at the packer level. What we really want to strive for at the American Hereford Association is create a legacy for your ranch, create that reputable market uh, for your cattle uh, through Hereford Genetics and we firmly believe that you can and we're just wanting to help you out. From the Sand Hills of Nebraska, I'm Brad Bullock for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn about the value of hybrid vigor and the Hereford Advantage program, visit hereford.org or call 816-842-3757. If you'd like to know more about what's happening with NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you can find us on Facebook. Be sure to like our page and we'll keep you updated with photos, details on upcoming shows, and much more. And it's a great way to connect with other cattlemen and women all across the country. So check us out on Facebook. Still ahead, we'll take a closer look at Gelby cattle and meet some ranchers who are raising gelvies in their operation. Don't go away, we'll have more right after this. Nasalgen 3 is a new three-way intranasal BRD vaccine that offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, BRSV, and PI3. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose new Nasalgen 3 PMH, the first and only five-way intranasal vaccine on the market. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. Join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the oldest cattle industry organization working every day to defend your interests in Washington, D.C. And there are big benefits to being a member. You'll get news you can use in the National Cattlemen and policy updates from Beltway Beef, plus big discounts from John Deere, Cabela's, and more great partners. Join now. Call 866-233-3872 or sign up online at ncba.org. Gelvy cattle are popular in several countries around the world, including here in the U.S. Reporter Brian Baxter introduces us to producers who believe Gelvy genetics help improve the performance and profitability of their herds. One of the strengths of America's cattle industry is the men and women who, working together, have built family businesses that are sustained across multiple generations. Well, the ranch was started by my great-grandfather about 140 years ago. Donald McDonald came from Scotland and he immigrated to Canada. And this was in the late 1860s. And then he came down through Canada and worked and then finally came down to this location on Chugwater Creek. 
and decided this is where he wanted to set up his ranch. So the Paulus Ranch was homesteaded in uh, 1905 by my great-grandfather, Ernest Paulus. He proved up in, on a Kincaid Act. And uh, so in 1910, he actually got ownership of one section of ground and we've built from there. So I'm fourth generation. My two children would be fifth generation. And we are a commercial uh, Galvey Angus cattle ranch. While proud of their long history, each of these family ranches, one in Nebraska and one in Wyoming, have also been willing to make big changes and to adapt their cattle herds by taking advantage of Gelvy genetics shortly after the breed was first introduced in the U.S. Gelvy cattle originally came over from Germany uh, in the 1970s, and that was about the same time that the American Gelvy Association was started. Uh, throughout the years, the Gelvy breed uh, has been very progressive, and in the early 2000s, the American Gelvy Association started registering the hybrid cattle of Gelvy and Angus, and we call those a balancer. My uh, grandpa started out with Horn Herefords, and we uh, introduced Gelvy into our operation. Um, mainly just because we wanted to try a change and we felt that the Gelvy genetics, once we got them, changed everything for us and we saw improvement in our herd, saw an improvement in the maternal side especially. We were able to keep our own replacements that way and from there it's just snowballed into a black hided animal that works great in the sandhills. What works for us on this using the Gelvy in our herd versus some other breeds is their docility, uh, the milking ability, they have good bone, good muscle. They convert well. They utilize the feed well, what, they, what we feed them. Just good productive cattle. With rough country and often severe winters, this part of the world calls for a hardy cow. And the Gelvy breed stands up to the challenge. The Gelvy cows milk well. They, they're just big old stout cows. They can handle this environment. They can handle the rocks. They you know, can get around. Our pastures are very large and uh, they can earn their own living pretty well. They, they breed back well. Cattle here need to be able to kind of take care of themselves uh, pretty much on range. And then during the winter, they're supplemented with cake and hay. Um, but what we look for in a, in a cow and in an animal that's gonna do well for us is something that we can keep replacements out of, as well as produce a nice steer in the fall. I think that the maternal strengths, the maternal superiority of Gelvy and Balancer females can provide many benefits to commercial cow-calf operations. Uh, Gelvy and Balancer influenced females just make tremendous mother cows. They reach maturity early, uh, they have high fertility, they can provide increased productivity, and those cows stay in the herd a long time with longevity and stability and ultimately contributing more potential profit to a ranching operation. These ranching families were quick to see the benefits of adding Gelvy and Balancer genetics to their herds, which gives them the added performance that comes with crossbreeding. Well, we're running the Gelvy Balancer bulls that uh, uh, the hybrid vigor that you get through through the crossbreeding really helps, and, and the Balancer bulls seem to do that real well for us. Once you introduce Gelvy, you're going to get that hybrid vigor, that growth that is going to push those cattle to the most extent that they can become. And we've tried straight red Angus before, and the Gelvy side is just going to give you that much more growth. The maternal side, not only on the cows, you're going to get the maternal side, but you're going to get extra milk that you're going to get from that you wouldn't see in some of the other breeds. I think there's a renewed interest in crossbreeding with many producers and uh, Gelvy has a lot to offer in that regard as far as uh, hybrid vigor and also breed complementarity. They cross very well with the British breeds so um, you know you get the best of both worlds. You get the strength of Gelvy, strength of whatever breed you're crossbreeding them with. Uh, people who run Gelvy and Balancer Influence females love those cows and then on the feed yard side of it uh, these Balancer cattle uh, are great feeder cattle. And as with other breeds, a strong association stands behind these families, serving them with a variety of programs that can help improve their herd performance and their marketing options. The American Gelvy Association has always been very commercially focused. So not only do Gelvy and Balancer cattle offer the traits that work for commercial cattle producers, but the American Gelvy Association also has tools and services to help those commercial cattle producers meet today's modern industry demands. Uh, those 
tools and services include our Balancer Edge and our Feeder Finder program, which help commercial producers to market their feeder calves. And then we also have our Smart Select service, which is a commercial uh, database that folks can use to help track the performance of their commercial cows and in the end help them make selection decisions. With those tools and more, these family ranchers are set to continue raising Gelvy cattle for yet another generation. I started my cow herd when I was eight or nine. My grandparents gave me my first Gelvy Angus heifer that I showed in 4-H. And then since then, I've gotten more heifers throughout the years and been able to show them in both 4-H and FFA. I really like the Gelvy Balancer genetics. I love their temperament and they're so pleasant to work with. We care about what we do and that's, it's family centered. So the fact that we get to have our family and do what we love, I think that's a really beautiful thing. A beautiful thing for sure. In Wyoming and Nebraska ranch country, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. To learn more about the Gelvy breed, visit the American Gelvy Association website at Gelvy. Org. We're back with more right after this. Stay with us. Grass is the center of our universe. We've got to have a grass program that we can count on and plan on. That's what we need to sustain us, to keep us growing to keep us prospering. Hey guys, my name is Buzz Brainerd. You may not know me, but you probably recognize my voice from the Music Row Happy Hour on the Highway on Sirius XM and Mornings on Y2 Country. Now I would like to invite you to join me August 10th to the 12th for the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. This is the event for the cattle business and it's one that you do not want to miss. Come on back to Nashville and CattleCon 21. For all the details, go to convention.ncba.org and I'll see you here. Every segment of our beef industry works hard to maintain a healthy herd, but the stalker segment is known specifically for its ability to manage stressed cattle. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has more on the steps that one Texas operator takes to set his cattle up for success. Wesley Wood knows that young growing calves can provide a challenge, something he's witnessed firsthand as a stalker operator in Texas. New cattle often arrive in a highly stressed state, so he takes special care to create a smooth transition period. We buy about seven to 10,000 head a year and uh, buy them pretty much within a 150 mile radius of here in Stephenville. Once we get these cattle home, main thing is is fresh hay and fresh water. Once we get these cattle started eating and drinking, then they go through our vaccine protocol. Those early vaccines are critical because not only are calves dealing with stress, their immune systems are still developing. One of the biggest mistakes a stalker can make is to try and save money by scaling back on their herd health practices. A lot of these cattle we get have not ever seen any vaccines, you're not doing the industry a favor by not giving them the proper vaccine protocol to set your cattle up for success. My vaccine program consists of Vista Once, Calvary 9, and Pink Eye Pillaguard. Our health has been phenomenal, but um, a lot that goes into that is getting the cattle vaccinated. That first arrival, that, that entrance into the operation is, is a critical time in these calves' life. Since these calves are coming in from so many different locations, different distances of hauling, uh, different backgrounds and, and so forth, there's, there's a lot of stress that's just innate to this business. And the more that stocker operators can do to lower that stress, the better off the cattle are going to be. The stressors that calves face while transitioning into a stalker system can increase the likelihood of bovine respiratory disease. BRD is common in beef cattle during the post-weaning phase, and an outbreak can be devastating for an operation. That's why it's important to maintain proper vaccination protocols. 
biggest concern is going to be bovine respiratory disease, you know, the whole shipping fever complex. And it's just that it's a complex. There's, these cattle are coming in from such a wide variety of backgrounds, uh, different exposures, different exposures to pathogens, to food sources, so forth, uh, that when they come together, they mix it all together. It's like sending a kid to, to preschool. There are great vaccines on the market that address the, the most common respiratory pathogens, viruses and bacteria. Uh, that's going to cause it and getting those vaccines in early um, is, is important but there's still going to be a few that get sick and those need to be treated and they need to be treated appropriately and selecting the appropriate antibiotic at the early onset is very important um, so working with the veterinarian to decide that is, is going to be critical sooner you can implement a treatment the better off those calves are going to be from a welfare standpoint and from a performance standpoint Bringing home calves from the sale barn can also mean bringing home a load of animals in need of deworming. Lightweight stalker calves are more vulnerable to parasites because they haven't developed immunity. This can cause problems with weight gain and make them more susceptible to disease. It reduces feed intake um, and without proper nutrition and proper nutrient intake, they can't respond to disease very well. They can't respond to vaccines very well. Getting rid of as much of the internal parasite load as we can up front is going to be very critical to get them on feed, to get them drinking, to get them comfortable, and then allow them to respond to the vaccines. Once they go through our chute, they get dewormed, and then everyone's on a, on a level playing field. And we periodically pull fecal samples on these cattle after we've had them for a couple of weeks just to make sure that we're clean and that our product is staying true to our program. One tool that we have is, we call it FECRT, which is fecal egg count reduction test. And with that, the way that works is on arrival, collect fecal samples, submit it to parasitologists and do a fecal egg count to get an idea of what the parasite burden is in these calves as they're coming in. 14 days later, we do get another sample from that same load and look for, do a fecal egg count. And the goal is to get at least a 90% reduction in total number of eggs from the day of deworming to two weeks later to show that the deworming protocol we're using, the, the, the product's timing, is reducing that, that burden. Safeguard has several options that are non-handling approaches. So you can add it as mineral, you can have it in cubes, a lot of feed-through based Safeguard deworming that can be done without disrupting the calves, bringing them back into the chute, slowing them down. They can, you can do a non-handling form of deworming at that phase and help further reduce that, that exposure to parasites as they, as they go on. For many stalker operations, vaccination and deworming is followed by adding a growth implant to the calf. This safe and profitable management tool can improve an animal's rate and efficiency of gain. Keeping cattle healthy helps with gains, but there's other things that we can add to it that kind of click that along, and implants are one of them. Obviously, the better quality pasture, more gains you're going to naturally get, and we just kind of compound that with these implants. But poor quality roughage as well. If that's all you have, you still want to try to capture some of those gains. And some of these grass type implants like Revlar G do a really good job at adding pounds. We're using Revlar G. Um, I've used some other products, but the duration is what I really like. It don't cost much to do, and the rate, the return is exceptional. Not only does Merck have the products to create a well-rounded herd health program, they also provide expert advice to ensure your cattle have everything they need to succeed. I've got a really good rep and if there's something wrong or I need something, he drops what he's doing, answers his phone and comes running and that's important to us. Everything we're doing does impact the bottom line of the producer, but we're really doing it for the betterment of the cattle and the well-being of the cattle. Producers are always looking for ways to increase the value of the calves they produce, and the right practices including vaccinations, deworming, and implants can go a long way toward improving your bottom line. Reporting from Texas, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now for more information on this or any of Merck's full lineup of products, just visit their website, MerckAnimalHealth.com. 
If you want to rewatch this or any other Cattleman to Cattleman story, then visit our YouTube page. You'll find a full archive of all of our shows packed with educational segments, information, and producer profiles from all across the country. So go to youtube.com slash Cattleman to Cattleman and check it out. When we return, we'll have a closer look at a South Carolina Angus seed stock farm that won an award for its conservation efforts. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you concerned about the impact government policies could have on your cattle business? One way to make your voice heard in Washington is by joining NCBA. When you join, you'll have access to key policy updates and insights from Beltway Beef. It's the best way to hear directly from NCBA's DC team. Beltway Beef provides valuable policy information and it's free for NCBA members. Stay in touch with Beltway Beef. Join now at ncba.org. Cattle producers across the country work hard to care for their animals and their land. The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service is there to help. Find out how you can work with NRCS to develop a conservation plan for your operation. Find possible funding resources for implementing conservation practices or get free expert advice on ways to improve your farm or ranch. Visit the website nrcs.usda.gov today. It's time to tune in to Tennessee. That's where the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show will be in 2021. It's the biggest convention just for cattle producers. In Nashville, a city with amazing southern hospitality that's packed with the best food and great music. You can't miss it. So make plans now for CattleCon 2021 at the Gaylord Opryland Resort in Nashville, Tennessee. Tune in to convention.ncba.org for more information. For years, America's beef producers have been leaders in the area of sustainability. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Kate Maher joins us with more on Yon Family Farms, a great Angus operation that has won multiple awards for their stewardship efforts. Thanks, Kevin. I'm talking now with Lydia Yon, one of the owners of the Yon Family Farms. Lydia, thanks for your time today. Glad to be here. Now, in 2008, Yon Family Farms was the National Environmental Stewardship Award winner. What has that meant to your family since? You know, it's been kind of a ongoing process, I guess. We never did anything that we did environmentally to win an award, obviously, but it was really cool that we were recognized for what we had done, and we've been big proponents of the program ever since and try to always go and see what the other operations are doing that are up for the award. But it's just been a building process. So ever since 2008, nothing's really changed as far as our mindset of whether we should continue to try to do the right thing environmentally or not. It's just something that's kind of bred into us to do that. So we're continuously putting in heavy use areas and doing things for erosion control and watering areas and feed roads, just, you know, a lot of things that have made not only the farm more environmentally sound, but have been smart for us from an economic standpoint too, from a labor standpoint. It's just been a win-win situation to do the right thing as far as taking care of the land. Yeah. And sustainability and stewardship sort of go hand in hand. And of course, sustainability is a big topic pretty much in all industries, but especially the beef industry now. How do you find that some of your stewardship efforts um, might help you be more sustainable or what does sustainability mean to you here on the farm? You know, it's, it's interesting. Sustainability wasn't even a word that we thought about a whole lot until it became such a big topic in the beef industry and, and the food industry as a whole a few years ago. Sustainability to us is not doing anything that we weren't already doing. It was just that the general public maybe didn't realize that we were doing things that were sustainable. I mean, so much of farming and agriculture are multi-generational operations. And so a lot of times I think the components of sustainability that we talk about are the environment and taking care of your community and your land and your animals. But another big part of it is also taking care of your business from a financial standpoint because 
you know, for us to pass this farm on to our kids, we have to be in business to earn a living. And not only are we doing it for the dollar, but we're doing it because it's the right thing to do and we want to pass it down to our kids and leave everything in better shape than it was, you know, when we got it. That's just the right thing to do. And it's, it's almost like second nature, it seems like to us, because I saw my parents do it and other cattlemen all have that mindset, but folks just don't know until you tell them. And you bring up a good point about sort of the general public and the consumers maybe not knowing and are driving a lot of this conversation and talk about sustainability and our farmers and ranchers sustainable. Um, what would your message to other producers be as far as um, telling your story and, and letting people know that, that we're sustainable? How important is that knowing that, that a lot of our consumers don't understand what we do? You know, I think that it's a once again, that's the thing that we have to realize is also part of our job. First of all, if the general consumer doesn't want to eat beef, who are you going to sell your product to? So that's the no-brainer. But the other part of it that's really hit home with me as, as my kids have gotten older, gone to college, and become young adults, is that so many of the folks that are purchasing our product, it's not that they want to make us out to be bad guys at all. It's just they don't know what we do. So I think the fact that we not necessarily accept their ideas as being right, but as being valid. And, you know, that doesn't mean we're always going to agree with their perceptions or their thoughts about our industry. But that's where it's important that we're willing to explain our our situation and why we do the things that we do and why they are sustainable and environmentally sound. And I think that we all should be willing to do that. And sure, it's time consuming and not always the funnest thing we're going to do on the farm that day, but it's something that we all should take responsibility to do. Yeah, and make us all sustainable for the long run. Exactly. So it's been a true honor and privilege to see your operation. Thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you. Kevin, we'll send it back to you now. To find out more about the Yon family and their high quality Angus cattle, just visit the website Yon Family Farms. Dot com. When we return, it's time for a visit with our good friend Baxter Black. Stay with us. When the field is your office, you never get tired of going to work. Cut, rake, bale, repeat. New Holland offers the power and versatility to get through the day. From small squares to large squares and everything in between, New Holland has you covered. Visit your local dealer today to find out more. New Holland. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. IMI Global is here to help you do just that. Did you know that Prefert makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefert Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefert makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefort Direct, visit us at prefort.com. Prefort, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. Can you imagine a world without cows? In the last five centuries, the domestic bovine has moved itself into virtually every county in the Western Hemisphere. But for the sake of our initial question, a world without cows, say we had been conquered by marauding Latvians or Amazonian dart blowers or a powerful vegetarian brokerage firm in Fiji who did not bring cattle into the country. Well, my first observation is there would be no Big Macs. Beef, milk, and cheese would not be available in abundance. Would we try and domesticate deer or buffalo or elk or wild goats? Would we be hearing, pork, it's what's for dinner? Or, where's the mutton? Or, goat, the other white meat? Got okra? <laughs> I'll have some certified Angus drumstick. Well, I'll have a fungus burger with shredded styrofoam and a side of those thistle poppers. <laughs> 
Does your horse meat pudding come with splash guards? I'll have some cold mutton gravy with hair in it. <laughs> I'm assuming goat milk would become the drink of choice. Chicken would become the biggest source of animal protein unless we were able to tame sperm whales. Shetland pony tenderloin would be served at good steakhouses and our eating habits would become boring to many Epicureans. They'd be yearning for a big, juicy, succulent, mouth-watering, medium rare, right off the grill, what? Gizzard? Camel hump? Dog leg? Cornish hamster? We'd be importing insulin made from yak pancreas. Leather upholstery, boots and baseballs would all be made of naga hide. Roy Rogers would have stayed in Iowa and become the soybean balladeer. Trevor Brazil would have become a professional golfer and I would be a former reptile veterinarian and swineherd poet. Ode to the pig who brings us ribs and pork. Oh, how I long to trade my ham for sirloin on a fork. This is Baxter Black, a mountain there. Thanks, Baxter. We sure appreciate hearing your brand of cowboy humor and common sense. One reason to become an NCBA member is the chance to read the National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. A subscription is included free of charge when you become an NCBA member. Just call 866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. We're back with more right after this. Stay with us. CattleCon 2021 is back in the Music City. Tune in to Tennessee for the cattle industry's biggest convention with education, networking, and fun, not to mention some great tunes. Plus, you can check out the huge NCBA trade show, outstanding entertainment, and much, much more. So make your plans and be there for CattleCon 2021. Stay tuned to convention.ncba.org for all the details. If you're looking for the best in cattle industry news, information, and education, then don't miss NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each week we cover important topics such as herd health and cattle handling, plus updates with congressional and industry leaders about today's top policy issues, and stories shot on location at cattle farms and ranches around the country. Don't miss NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV and on YouTube. Time now for Weather Watch with meteorologist Matt Makins. Meteorologist Matt Makins here with this week's Weather Watch. Now, what we've been watching most pressing for the industry has been the heat, especially across the west and the Pacific Northwest, at times in the northern plains. I'll have the outlook for the rest of summer, temperature-wise, coming up in just a moment. But on this map behind me, this is June, and all the red locations you see, for the month of June, these nearly 300 sites set all-time record highs. And I'm not talking about like a daily high record or even a record temperature for a month. I'm talking about the all-time hottest temperature was recorded at these nearly 300 sites. Real concentration there to the Pacific Northwest. We see a concentration here in the Four Corners region, a scattering through Wyoming into Montana, even North Dakota and far northern Minnesota. These sites set all-time record temperatures as hot as 120 degrees. But even Portland and Seattle hit the triple digits easily a number of times to set records there. So very, very hot in the month of June exceptionally so. Now as far as the drought is concerned, the drought and the heat play together. So we still have the exceptional drought, again exceptional in the negative sense, for the west and the northern plains. And where you have these drought areas, the air is drier, the soil is drier, obviously it's a drought, but those areas are easier to warm up. So dry climates are easy to get hot easy to hit those extreme marks. So where we have the Northern Plains, much of the Corn Belt now, the Southwest and the Pacific Northwest, these areas that are currently in this drought will continue to have a very hot summer ahead. 
perhaps just as hot as June was. Speaking of June, this is the average temperature for the month of June across the country. A lot of the West was 5 to 10 to 12 degrees warmer than average just in June. As far as the Northern Plains, also exceptionally warm. The South and the Southeast did have some cooler pockets. They were the exception to the norm. They were the exception by being cooler. And there's been cooler for the early part of July as well. This map is for early July. Tremendously hot across the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Plains. For the South and the Deep South, some cooler pockets. Now the outlook for the remainder of summer and off into early fall. We'll see the cooler than average spots pushed down to the south and will continue hotter than average to the west and the north. You're going to read much more on that on the next edition of National Cattlemen Newspaper. Until then, be well. Today, we've shared the story of several seed stock producers who go above and beyond caring for their animals. And one key factor in that care is improved cattle handling to help keep the animals calm and easy to work with. So let's turn things over to two of our favorite experts in this area with a taste of a training session from a recent NCBA stockmanship and stewardship event. If I speed this side up over here, it's gonna send them right out the gate. Now I gotta step over here and speed this side up to send them on through the gate. And I'll, I'll just, um, it's like I'm driving a team. I'll keep sending sides. Because I'm at the back of the cattle and I got to send those cattle forward. Come on. I got to send them forward through and then I got to keep coming back. Send this side up. Now I'll send this side over. I'll just zigzag back. I'll send this side through. Now I'll send this side up and I'll have to hustle up over here just a little bit. And I'll roll these guys right on around. I'll roll them around, roll them around. Now I got to come to this side, send these on up. I'm still looking out at the front. Send him through. Now I'm going to hustle over here. I'm going to draw this, this thing. This is the one we had in first. I'm going to draw her, him right around in there. And I'll switch eyes. Good. And we'll draw him around and put him in this side. Yeah. And it's nice to have a gate to go through so they have a little more distance to go. Then they'll start really understanding why they want to draw. Yeah, now see these others are not looking, but these little heifers, these heifers are looking for their herd mate, so I'm going to use them as my, my draw. And if I can empty a pen by not having to go get them and draw these cattle out, those I can back up and create more draw, that speed helps bring cattle to me. And I don't have to go over there and push him anyway. So I've, we've changed the dynamic a little bit here in the corral. So all I've done is set them up for success, use the first ones to draw the rest ones in. That's gonna be important as we try to create flow through this system. We gotta create draw and flow, all right? So to me, that's what I want them to do. If I put pressure on them, they come to me, go through the gate, I didn't have to do anything, did I? But open the gate. Notice they are looking. So I want to get these cattle where they'll draw through here as well. So if they weren't looking and looking off the other way, I would probably go put some pressure on them to draw their attention just like Kurt did here. I want to step in here, try to draw them out of that corner. If they go back, I'm going to just keep trying to draw eyes out until I get some flow down. Now, once again, they're not going to leave until I get them all turned and go in the same direction. They know the gate's open. We're just about to get ready to go. I'm going to send old bugger in there and see if I can get them to move. Now, here I want to stay out a little bit, push on this one's eye. I'm not really worried about him going behind the gate. But not focusing on him, he figured out how to get around the gate. Now this is the same place that we talked about earlier about not keeping enough pressure on them. So I'm gonna put a little more pressure on these, get my flow through there. Raise my hand is enough to put some pressure. And then I can feed these in behind. He's wanting to go away from me. I'm gonna try to put pressure on him to where it's really a good idea to go that way. Once again, that draw to get them to go and then try to put that 
movement through there. One, if we're gonna work these cattle, we've gotta get them used to going through this system and across these bars. I don't know how many times I've heard how important it is to not have any obstacles in the way. There's all sorts of obstacles in here, in the ground, pipes we're crossing. It may have slowed them down a little bit, but not much. Want to know how you can get your own cattle handling training with Kurt Paid and Ron Gill? Just visit stockmanshipandstewardship.org for details on these can't-miss educational experiences. We're wrapping up this week's show with legacy photos. Some great shots from our viewers of daily life on their own farms and ranches. Let's take a look. Want to see your photo on Cattleman to Cattleman? You can submit your favorite shots a couple of ways. Message them to us on the Cattleman to Cattleman Facebook page or email them to c2c at beef.org. Send them our way and we may use them on a future episode. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.